Cycling the entire length of Britain is not the type of challenge most people would expect a typical 90-year-old retired vicar with arthritis in both knees to be undertaking. But this is not any ordinary 90-year-old. This is Peter. Peter's my wife's granddad, and as you'll come to realise, he's not your typical man. Cycling from Land's End to John O'Groats has been a rite of passage for those with a penchant for two wheels and skin-tight lycra ever since bicycles were invented. He's already completed this momentous journey three times before, at 75, 80 and 85 years old. But it's five years since he last undertook this ride, and at his age, five years makes a huge difference. His arthritis has worsened, and he struggles to walk far at all, even with his trusty collapsible walking stick. However, driven by his motivation to raise money for two different homeless charities, six months ago, he told his friends and family that he wanted one more crack at this fateful journey, an attempt that, if successful, would be an unofficial world record for the oldest person ever to cycle the length of Britain. His 90th birthday was the 18th of August, and four days later, he set off from Cornwall to start his journey. My wife and I joined him in Northern Scotland, with three days separating him from British cycling immortality. We had no idea just quite what laid ahead of us, and were keenly aware that although we'd broken the back of this challenge, we were now in the remote Scottish Highlands, where the hills are high and the weather can change in an instant. What was just three days cycling for us, fit and healthy 26 year olds, was going to have to be a literal world class effort on Peter's part, on top of already three weeks of non stop cycling. And outside of the joy and excitement that came along with seeing a family member on the cusp of achieving something truly special, I had some other reasons for joining him on his ride. I wanted to know what really motivated him to take on such an effort. What was his secret? How was he doing what he was doing? As a cycling novice, I had to rent a bike from Inverness and buy a pair of cycling shorts that I'd been strongly advised I'd need to protect my. <coughs> Both things sorted, we headed to the meeting point. Should I just go in here? Bike. Try and get your bike. Try and get your bike. Good morning, good time. Hello! Yeah. Hi, Granddad! Good morning! How Hello. are you? Very well indeed, thank you. Hi, Hi Peter, good to see you. Good. Yeah. How are you doing? It was great to catch up, but there'd be more time to talk later. It was clear Peter was in the zone after three weeks of cycling behind him and was chomping at the bit to get on. So I rushed outside and proceeded to make a mess of setting up my bike. I have been very impressed with some of the pictures at how high you're getting your leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. If I get tired, I find that quite difficult. <laughs> and before I knew it, we were off. This was only day one for us, See you later. but day 26 for Peter. Bye, Ad. See you in a bit, see if I can keep up. See you later. And we had a strict schedule to keep up if we wanted to complete the 40 miles it would take to get to our place for the night, the Crask Inn. He told me he'd had a dreadful ride the day before with non-stop yeah. rain and some nasty hills, so I braced myself <laughs> for the weather. But what we got yeah. instead was sunshine. It's beautiful! Oh, yeah. Isn't it gorgeous? I passed them about a couple, maybe two kilometers ago. Um, so I'm waiting for them to come up this hill. We made a brief stop nine miles in for day for Peter to take two of his sugar tablets. At least, that's what he told us they were. Well, as I say to me, well, I get on my bike, I'm thinking as younger. Peter then went on to give us a promise for the rest of the ride. Unless I'm mistaken, and I hope I'm not mistaken, there aren't any de really demanding hills. <laughs> Shortly after this stop, we made our way to a post office and bike repair shop where Peter sought some much needed attention for his brakes. This gave us an opportunity for a coffee and cake stop and to talk about his bright yellow high vis t-shirt. Many thanks. It's a great idea, the t-shirt actually, because it, it means really that you is. don't have yeah. this. It's been worse, but it's because it's very light. Heaven knows how many times it's worth it going. But can I give you something for your That's very, oh, very good. Thank you, thank you so <laughs> yeah, thank much. You. <laughs> I told Grandad, but when I was um, when I pulled into a little road, mm. um, a, a, a lorry driver stopped his lorry and like pulled in, and he gave me a tenner out of his window. And he, oh really? Yeah. We picked up Peter's newly repaired bike and moved swiftly on. So we're just cycling to day one's lunch spot at the moment. Peter says this is the best weather, or at least some of the best weather that he's had the whole trip. He's going to say it feels light work on a day like today, but I'm sure that's not been the case for most of his travels. It was easy as a relatively fit 26 year old joining Peter only for his final three days to take for granted what he'd achieved so far. 
and what he continued to do each day out on his bike, especially when the weather was this good. But it didn't take long before I was duly reminded of what sort of physical and mental effort it required of him. There's a big hill coming up, just on the horizon. Excellent work. I don't know how he does it. Wow. As we stopped at the top of the hill to take some layers off, I continued to wonder what could drive someone to want to undertake such a momentous challenge at the age of 90. As we pushed on, Peter took a moment to shed some light on this question and highlight why he felt the need to be raising money for the homeless. But it must be terrible for people feel that no one cares about. Yeah. There's a, a verse in one of the Psalms which I always think is one of the saddest verses in the whole Bible. No one cared for my soul. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people like that. I'm, I'm, I'm just so, so rich in that sense, you know, with family and friends. There's someone that no one really cares about. Peter was aiming to raise £50,000 to split between the Salvation Army and Access Community Trust. After an initial flurry of donations from family and friends, alongside money he'd raised en route, fundraising had stalled. Despite being in the last three days of his four-week ride, he was barely past the halfway point of this target. Fantastic, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We experienced some more generosity from passers-by, reading Peter's lucky charm, his Hivers t-shirt, he was always hugely grateful for these small donations, but if he were to hit the £50,000 mark, we all knew he would need more exposure. Easier said than done. I mean, the thought now of going back even five days and doing it again is absolutely unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes, of course. Let alone the thought of Cornwall. <laughs> We pushed on north, becoming increasingly more remote, before finally reaching the Crask Inn and marking the end of another day. <laughs> Peter was one step closer to the finishing line, but what lay ahead was no easy feat, and possibly some of the most challenging cycling so far. Completing the journey and making it to John O'Groats was still by no means a certainty, and would come under real threat over the next two days. We made ourselves comfortable, I introduced myself to Kraskin's owner's pet grizzly bear, Maggie, and relaxed by the fire. Later in the evening, Peter's daughter and my mother-in-law, coincidentally also called Maggie, joined us. We had a great evening and hearty meal and headed to bed in good time. Lil and I had been planning to camp, but we'd been offered the use of the Wendy house by the Kraskin. It turned out to be a glorified shed, but considering it rained all night, we were very appreciative, even if it was probably haunted. Thankfully, we're not camping tonight because it's raining quite a lot, as you might be able to hear. So, let's rest and recharge, ready for another day. We woke up after a broken sleep through a whole night of rain. We grabbed a quick shower and a warm breakfast and we headed out again. So the weather's much different today compared to yesterday. Yesterday, Peter said it was probably the best day of cycling he had weather-wise. I'm sure the company helped too. But today it's very foggy, it's misty, it's kind of gently spitting, but we're expecting rain today, so fingers crossed it holds off for a bit. We started out on a cold and foggy morning, and with Maggie now having joined us, we had a third bike. I'm talking about my mother-in-law, not the bear-sized dog from the Crafts Inn, by the way. This meant that Maggie and Lily were able to share cycling duties and join Peter and I on the road at different points. The promise of more rain never came and the weather soon changed into another rare but breathtaking sunny autumnal day in the Scottish Highlands. Almost at the top. So we're just stopping off for a mid-morning snack and to appreciate the view. If you could choose, Grandad, what would be your favourite um, 
mid cycle ride snack. I suppose I have to say a cheese scone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a way, you're kind of eating a, a deconstructed cheese scone. We enjoyed our morning, stopping again briefly so Lily and Maggie could switch over when Maggie received a welcome call. Maggie's just currently on the phone to someone from BBC Breakfast about an interview possibly tomorrow for Peter. 1,500 feet is the highest level. Peter's got a busy schedule of interviews, which is delaying our start. Peter had effectively passed the pre-interview and had been booked to appear on BBC Breakfast the following morning, which is the UK's flagship national morning news programme. It wasn't about recognition for himself or his own achievements that mattered to him but instead it was highlighting the plight of the charities that he was raising money for. To this point, he'd only made appearances on local radio stations, but with national television, there was a unique opportunity to really supercharge the faltering fundraising efforts. All of us around Peter were nervously excited for the following morning, but his mind was focused on only one thing. Lunch is on the horizon, but there's one thing in the way. Betty Hill. It's a big hill that Peter tackled five years ago. He's obviously at his most tired right now after a month on the road. So he's going to need all the support he can get to get him up to the top of that. I cycled ahead to give some words of encouragement. I thought he'd need more than that to get to the top. Go on, Peter. Because of his advanced arthritis in his knees, not only is it extremely hard to get going on an uphill once he'd stopped, but also trying to push his bike up the hill was far harder than cycling. He would have to muster all of his willpower to get up the hill in one go, with no brakes and no stopping. But as with every challenge presented to him so far, he took it in his stride. Straight on where Lily is. I wondered how many moments like this Peter had endured throughout his four weeks of cycling. How many times had he pushed his 90-year-old body to its physical limit and beaten the odds just to reach the top of one of many seemingly endless hills on his journey? His resilience and motivation was inspiring to witness. It was beginning to occur to me that there was no secret formula Peter possessed or that I could discover or replicate. Sheer oh, force of mind was what pushed Peter on backed up by steely motivation to help people less fortunate than himself. Anyway, Betty Hill had been conquered and added to his ever-growing list of scalps. Peter made a point of saying he didn't know who Betty was, but if he were to see her, he'd like a strong word. We arrived at the lunch spot, chatted, recharged, and even received some more donations from other customers. But soon enough, we got going again. So Peter actually set off half an hour before us after lunch. He was keen to get going. He didn't want to stiffen up. So we've spent the last 45 minutes trying to catch him. And we literally have no idea where he is. There's a lot of hills in between lunch and the hotel. So kudos to him for keeping us off his back. <laughs> we continued trying to catch him up, but despite some of the hardest climbing of the trip so far, he pipped us to the finish line. You beat us, Peter! <laughs> we are trying a, to catch you! That was far the hardest stretch since I reached Scotland. Yeah. That was so hilly. More like hard. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, one of the hardest stretches of the whole trip. And with that came the end of day two. Peter took some time to briefly catch up with his family and reflect on his day. My I kept I kept asking God to flatten it out a bit, but <laughs> he thought I needed the character training. <laughs> you wouldn't want it to be too easy just at this point. It's, it's funny that you forgot though, Peter, isn't it? That amnesia from... <laughs> yes, well, you do, yes. Cheers. <laughs> and once more, it was early nights, ready for what laid ahead the following morning. Uh, you don't want it too windy when you're cycling, and someone who'll be concerned about that is a 90-year-old who is cycling 1,100 miles. Let's introduce you to Peter Langford, who hopes to become the oldest man to cycle from Land's End to John O'Groats. Now, good morning to you, Peter. 
Good morning. Um, final day, as we said, of your mammoth journey, your fourth time you've done this. Uh, how are you feeling ahead of the final one? Um, I'm feeling very confident, uh, thank goodness. Um, I haven't always felt confident every day, but and, and been enormously warmed by the generosity of people in, in all sorts of places. You know, someone who passed a £20 note through the car window. What's the perfect meal? You know, when you've done a bit of the leg and you just need to sit down and just refuel and feel good. Uh, Describe well, it, to me the perfect dish. <laughs> it's a cheese scone. And the cycle yeah. group that I belong to in Beckles, uh, they gave me a whole wad of £5 notes to spend on cheese scones. <laughs> You've got to tell me why you do it. I mean, I know you're doing this for charity. I know you're doing it to raise money. But if you do, is it, take this the wrong way, at 90, perhaps there are other things you can do. Why this? <laughs> Uh, well, there are lots of other things I can do and <clears throat> lots of things I do do, but, but um, uh, it's a, I think it's a challenge and I've always been concerned about homeless people uh, and so this was an opportunity and um, I've been sort of bleeding my age for all it's worth and it's, it's mm -hmm. really, really paying off because uh, an enormous amount of money has already come in, uh, £29,000 I think, which is, which is very gratifying. Good luck, enjoy it with the family and enjoy that cheese scone when you get to the end, or two even, when you get to the end. Thank you very much. Having a cheese scone now, you know. Well, after. Yeah, not a cheese scone. Is that all right? Thank you very much for your time this morning, that was great. Take care and good luck. The interview finished and it was a quick turnaround with Peter keen to shoot off. We all hoped it would have the desired effect and that hopefully donations would be raining in. We'd have to wait a short while to find out. Peter and Maggie raced off again, nice and early. Good luck! After a photo shoot to start the day, of course. So as I said before, Peter's raced off with Maggie first thing this morning, straight after breakfast, because he's got a target in mind of 4 p.m. to get to John O'Groats. Uh, there's a few interviews to do and some people that he wants to meet, so bless him, he doesn't want to let anyone down. So he's really keen just to push on and get there. So I'm leaving a little bit later and I'm going to try and catch them up, um, hopefully a little bit more successfully than yesterday. Racing to catch up with them. I don't want to miss a second of it. Good cycling. I caught up with them after closing up at the b, &B and just tried to soak up this last day. Honestly, the feeling I got just being a small part of this monumental achievement that Peter was on the cusp of was like nothing else. I was loving every minute of it and I couldn't keep a huge grin off my face. Quick stop for some glucose tablets. People will start wondering if there's anything else in the tablets other than glucose. Even the aggressive crosswind and the persistent drizzle couldn't conspire to try and dampen our spirits, however hard it tried. The rain's coming now. It can try and stop us, but I don't think it will. Push. <laughs> You've got to, if you can muster one, yeah. Brew stop at the most northerly point in mainland Britain, and Peter's already on his way. He's relentless. Good afternoon. We made a quick stop at a royal castle and had our final lunch of the trip. But before finishing, Peter took time to explain why he'd chosen the charities he had. You know, people become homeless for all sorts of reasons. Some people might think it's all their own fault, but and that might be the case sometimes, but not, not necessarily, not usually. And the Salvation Army and the local charity that I, I'm working with uh, do wonderful work for people who can be helped and are willing to be helped, getting them right back into ordinary life again. So it's, it's a great, great work they do. And how can people support you? 
well, they can support me by making donations, uh, which they can do um, by going into, on to ju Just Giving and looking for Peter Langford. Setting off now for the last leg of the trip. Not long to go at all. We set off on final time for the home straight. A journey that was new to me, but very familiar to Peter. Oh, yeah. Lily and I raced ahead just in time to see Peter home. Yeah. We were greeted by Peter's welcoming party and joined them to watch the main event. <laughs> Last push! This has been very different from most of my usual videos, where I talk about running, general fitness, or whatever crosses my mind really. But having the opportunity to collaborate with such a high caliber fitness influencer like Peter, well, I wasn't gonna pass that up, was I? The BBC Breakfast appearance and the various interviews that came afterwards boosted Peter's fundraising appeal. Within 24 hours of finishing, he rocketed up from 29,000 to 34,000 pounds. He's proved himself to be a true hero, whose efforts have inspired hundreds of people along the way and raise money for those without a voice or without a home. Peter had finally completed his four-week cycling tour, and what an adventure it had been.